Welcome everybody to the Family Foundation event. Uh, those of you who are joining us probably know we plan to do this in person, but uh, the weather did not cooperate. So we are here using the wonders of modern technology to continue. And uh, as always, Victoria Cobb doesn't quit. And so she is moving ahead with this, uh, even though it's not under the ideal circumstances. So thank all of you for joining us. And we hope that this program is going to encourage and inspire you uh, and help you to realize what we're up against and what's needed in order to make sure that we are successful in beating back some very, very evil forces that have some very bad things in store for our families, our children, indeed for our commonwealth. And so first, uh, I want to introduce to you, uh, 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 let me see, let me make sure I've got this, yes. The Honorable Becky Norton Dunlop is going to be our first speaker. Uh, she's a prominent leader, a strategist, a counselor in the conservative movement. I've known Becky for many, many years. She has been a force to be reckoned with for a long time. And she's been on the front lines of the battle really to save our country and to restore the, 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 the fundamental conservative, traditional Christian values that made America possible. She was the Heritage's Vice President for External Relations from 98 to May of 2016, and she served on the Trump transition team. She was a senior official at the Reagan administration from 1981 to 1989 inside the White House and at the Justice Department and the Interior Department. And from Reagan's first inauguration in 1981 to 85, her White House posts include Deputy Assistant to the President for Presidential Personnel and Special Assistant to the President and Director of his Cabinet Office. And during Reagan's second term, she served as Senior Special Assistant to former Attorney General Edwin Meese in charge of managing cabinet level domestic policy issues. And she oversaw major policy reports on the environment, the family, federalism, tort reform, privatization, and welfare reform. And she completed her service in the Reagan administration as Deputy Undersecretary of the Interior Department and as Assistant Interior Secretary for Fish, Wildlife, and Parks. Folks, it is an honor to have her joining us today, Becky Norton Dunlap. Becky, thanks so much. Uh, the floor is yours uh, to share with us what's on your heart at this very, very critical moment in the history of our country. Okay, um, I hope all of my technology is working properly. I trust it is. So is there another problem? Why okay. don't we move forward over to our next speaker and maybe circle back. Congressman Rob Whitman. Yes, Perfect. yes. Uh, there, there, Jackson, how are you? I'm going to turn, turn, my, uh, turn, turn, my, turn my camera on here. Well, listen, you really need no introduction to everybody, <laughs> Rob. We're, we're honored that you took time to join us. We, we know how long you've been providing great leadership for us here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Rob has been focusing on strengthening our military, supporting veterans. Thank you, Rob, as a veteran. Thank you very much for that. Promoting economic development through fiscal responsibility fixing our crumbling infrastructure and increasing access to high internet high speed and, and uh, promoting workforce development and, and, and a host of other things. He serves on the House Armed Services Committee and the Committee on Natural Resources and has earned a reputation for being an advocate for our men and women in uniform and for being a champion of the Chesapeake Bay. He is the co-chair of the Congressional Shipbuilding Caucus. He's a staunch advocate for a robust naval fleet Lord, do we need it now, and a healthy domestic shipbuilding industry. He currently serves on the U.S. Naval Academy's Board of Visitors. Prior to his election to Congress, he served 26 years working in state government. He worked for many years as an environmental health specialist and for local departments in Virginia's Northern Neck and Middle Peninsula regions. Again, Congressman Rob Whitman, welcome, my friend. Again, the floor is yours. Go ahead, share with us what's on your heart. Absolutely, Bishop Jackson. Well, listen, thank you all so much. Thank you, Bishop Jackson, for your leadership in being a 
staunch advocate for the freedoms and liberties that we all know are so fundamental to this nation. Thank you so much for all that you do uh, each and every week to, to bring a, a whole host of really incredible speakers out for folks to, uh, uh, to, to hear from and, and for you to question and, and really get some, some thoughtful, thoughtful insights into things that are going on there in the, in the thought realm of conservatism, which is key these days. And Victoria, thanks so much to you and everyone at the Family Foundation for all that you've done through the years to keep issues that are incredibly important for us and to us out in the forefront. In fact, I would argue it's group, groups like the Family Foundation that led to uh, the recent Supreme Court decision on Dobbs and have us at a place where indeed the Constitution is being followed uh, as I believe it is written, and that is that uh, the states are indeed at the center of determining uh, issues concerning abortion. So I think that's, that's incredibly important for all states. And I want to uh, thank everybody for joining us. You know, this is going to be an incredibly competitive election cycle, but those uh, competitions are going to provide a lot of opportunity for us. We have a, a great opportunity in the seventh district of Virginia uh, to pick up that seat. We have an incredible uh, candidate there, Yesley Vega. I've known Leslie, Yesley through the years. In fact, she and I have knocked doors together uh, and she's helped me in my campaign. We've been out as she ran for the Board of Supervisors in Prince William County, has done an incredible job there. Uh, and she will be, I believe, our new member representing the new 7th District in the United States Congress. And she is a fighter, she gets it, she understands issues that are incredibly important, not just to the nation, but to the Commonwealth. She's passionate, uh, she has a great background in things that are important to not only her community, but the Commonwealth. Uh, her background in law enforcement, she understands too what military service is about. Bishop Jackson, just as you spoke, and by the way, thanks for your service in the United States Marine Corps. Rah! <laughs> <laughs> Give you a good, good hoorah shout out there. Uh, but Yesley understands it too. Uh, her husband serves in the military. So she has that, that perfect perspective, I think, on things. You know, I'd served on a board of supervisors for years. And, and that on the ground experience and what happens on a board is incredibly valuable for somebody operating in Washington because they remember uh, clearly what the roles of government are. And I think a lot of times today, people forget that our founding fathers intended for the federal government to be limited and that the state and local governments have the predominance of the responsibility and the power. Yesley will go to Washington with that perspective. She'll be there as a staunch supporter of our uh, law enforcement community, a staunch supporter of our nation's defense, a staunch advocate for securing our border uh, also making sure that, again, with limited government, we don't find ourselves as we see the majority party spending and spending and spending and more with this reconciliation bill uh, that it is a tax and spend bill. And, and folks, I want to remind you that uh, they call it the Inflation Reduction Act. They got two words of that title correct. It is indeed an inflation act, but there's no reduction to it. Uh, this is all about growing government. And even afterwards, Joe Manchin said, oh, this is about uh, this is about climate, climate change. And it's about uh, the aspects of government control on health care, which we know uh, will, won't lead to uh, lower prices. In fact, I argue it just pushes the, the pricing in different areas. And actually, it will reduce the number of new drugs, life saving drugs that would be available to folks. So Yesley comes with the with with the right background there and. And she's joined by some other great cohorts. I was with Jen Kiggins the other day. Jen's doing a great job. She is going to win the second district. Hung Cow, what a great story with Hung, a Vietnamese refugee, came here, worked hard, went to Thomas Jefferson High School, got in based on merit, uh, did incredibly well there, went to the United States Naval Academy, graduated from there, went to serve in the Navy for 25 years as, as a special operator. Folks, we have incredible, incredible candidates. The, the the same, the same in the in the in the eighth and the eleventh. I know Governor Yunkin was there yesterday, kicking off campaigns in the eighth and eleventh, uh, and with with Miles and 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 uh, Miss Lipson there. So they are all great candidates. And uh, I was with Leon Benjamin yesterday too. Uh, Pastor Leon is doing doing the Lord's work as well as running an incredible campaign. So, folks, we have a great opportunity great opportunity to really 
turn the Commonwealth around. But let's 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 make no mistake about it. This is indeed a Herculean task. And as is normal, the closer we get to election time, polling shows that things are closing. So, you know, I always urge folks not to take anything for granted. You know, when it says, oh, it's going to be a red wave, uh, waves don't happen unless folks work very hard, knock on doors, help in getting the resources to our candidates. Folks, we can win these races, but the other side is not going to stand aside. They will do everything and anything in order to win. So we need, need to be mindful of that. But I appreciate all that the Family Foundation has done. Think about the last campaign cycle, folks. They knocked nearly 200,000 doors in that campaign cycle. That's what wins elections. And that's what will assure that we win these House seats here in Virginia and have a majority of Republican members from the Virginia delegation in the United States House. It's that type of work that makes things happen. And folks, when the Family Foundation calls upon you to help knock doors, to help coordinate efforts in a neighborhood, uh, to help with funding so that they can actually mobilize these volunteers, please, 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 please answer the call. Uh, when Victoria sends the, sends the message out, uh, uh, every penny that you give to the Family Foundation is used in an incredibly effective way. Every minute that you give to the Family Foundation goes directly to helping candidates. And I can tell you the Family Foundation is one of those linchpins that assures that we're able to win elections. So Bishop Jackson, I appreciate the opportunity to share a few words. I probably went on too long, but I wanted to just encourage folks that I know the passion we have out there. We see what happens. Elections do have consequences. Look at what happened last year. Virginia is not purple. It's not blue. It is red. We saw what happened with Glenn Youngkin, Winston Sears, and Jason Meares. We have a chance to do the same thing this year. We have great candidates. These are just fantastic candidates, folks. We have an opportunity to turn Virginia around, I think, in, in, in a long-term fashion by winning these congressional seats. So, Bishop Jackson, with that, I yield the floor back to you. <laughs> well, can I ask you one question before you go? Sure. That is, would you, would you respond to this, this 80, these 87,000 IRS agents that have, we've been told have been hired or go, are going to be hired, uh, that they won't touch the middle class, that they're only going after billionaires? Can the American people, can we here in Virginia rely on that? Uh, that is, uh, that's absolutely in, incorrect, uh, Bishop Jackson. 87,000 IRS agents in $80 billion. That's what the B, 80 billion additional dollars going to the IRS. We're being told that it's all about customer service. Well, uh, all you have to do is to look at the job description for IRS agents. Now, they've since taken that down, but they said carry a gun and be willing to use deadly force. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that that has anything to do with customer service or anything to, to help uh, for the average everyday taxpayer. We do know, too, in what happens in how audits are done is that we believe statistically that an average family making less than $75,000 a year will be four times more likely to receive an audit than they would prior to this. So the, the it, it is misleading to say, oh, all they're going to do is to focus on tax cheats and people making over $400,000 a year. And remember, the way the way they're able to, to look at these tax returns, the tax returns come in 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 income ranges. So there's no way that they can go out there and say, oh, we're going to use this absolute number of $400,000 in order to go after somebody. And remember, too, that $400,000 for an individual that may have a limited liability corporation, an S corp or something that's a pass through entity, they may gross $400,000. But I can tell you what they put in their pocket is much less than it. Many times, you know, well, well below a hundred, hundred thousand dollars. So, so to somehow say, oh, we're going to go after the rich people, is another misnomer, and it's, it is not correct in what they assert. This is going to be. Make no mistake about it. With that number of IRS agents, with that amount of money, uh, they will be coming after. I believe everybody, everybody, including folks below four hundred thousand dollars which drives home the point why these elections, these congressional elections are so critical because they've gotten this through, but we need a, Cong a Congress that is going to give the proper oversight and really, we hope, undo some of the damage that is right. being done. So, and these races are really, really important and everybody yeah. has got, it's, it's all hands on deck. Yes, absolutely. Congressman, thank you so much. We really appreciate Jackson. you taking time to join us. All Thanks. right.
Thank you. God bless. God bless you. God bless all of our all of our supporters out there for the Family Foundation. Keep up the great work. Victoria, thank you and the entire staff there. I wish all of you God's continued blessings. Amen. Amen. Congressman Rob Whitman, folks, uh, we have got to take these seats. We've got to win these elections, and we can. He said, we can do it. We can do it. But the Family Foundation is on the front lines of making sure that that happens by getting our voters properly informed and mobilized. And we've got to support them in every way we can to make sure that they can do that job. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't know whether I, I'm, I'm assuming that Miss um, Norton Dunlop could not be with us today. Um, and uh, I guess my understanding is that Yesley had a change of schedule and could not uh, be here. Am I wrong? Uh, this is this is Becky Dunlop. Oh, there you I, are. I, I was able to there get you are. I, I apologize. No, I just you. got on. OK, well, listen, great to have you. Um, well, I've already introduced you and talked yeah. about your rather illustrious resume. <laughs> so, so, Becky, why don't you just go right ahead? Well, thank you so much. Sorry about the technical problems here. I'm I'm sitting in a hotel in in Richmond, and it's um, it's just one of those days, you know. Anyway, thanks for the introduction, and thanks to Victoria and the team at the Family Foundation, and to everybody who is on the line here today. Wow. It is, I just wish we could all be together. It's just a shame the weather didn't cooperate with us. But uh, I just wanted to take a few minutes and, and thank you for the opportunity to, to be here to talk to the Family Foundation uh, supporters about how important it is these days to be uh, not only a supporter of the Family Foundation and the action and our candidates who share our values, but why it is such a, a, a timely time in our country. Um, I didn't hear all of what uh, Representative Whitman said, but uh, I, I've studied a lot of history and there are a few examples in the history of our world of countries being on the precipice uh, of, of falling into a, a territory that is not free. And uh, it, we have seen it happen. It, it uh, sneaks up on us. And then all of a sudden you reach a tipping point. Uh, and we are at a point in our country's history uh, where we see dangers on the horizon that, that are very, very, very serious. And um, so I appreciate taking the opportunity here to talk to you. I, I would say, first of all, people of faith need to pray. Um, my husband and I were recently in touch with Charles Stanley, Dr. Charles Stanley, about the need for a great awakening. And he said he prays for one every day. He doesn't know if we'll have one in our country uh, in the near future. But the first and most important thing he said is we have to pray. And so that's, I would say, is the first marker for us all is if we're people of faith, we have to pray uh, for our country and for the people who are, have been willing to put themselves on the line and run as candidates to try to save uh, liberty in our great country. And then the second thing really is we need to know how close we are to great uh, tra tragedy in our country and be committed uh, to support the efforts of ourselves and our family and people like the Family Foundation team uh, who are out there on the front lines working very hard uh, to make sure we're electing people who share our values. We each as families and individuals have to be committed to invest in this effort to save our nation. Uh, you know, it seems like every election since I first started voting, we would say, well, this is the most important election of our lifetime. But, but friends, I, I think we really are at a point where if we are not able to take the House of Representatives this year uh, the, the legislation that will be passed and the non-oversight of the executive branch, which will occur, uh, will put us in such peril that it may very well be difficult to recover from it in our lifetime. Uh, you know, the, all of the things that are happening, not only the bad legislation that's being passed, but the executive actions that are occurring from uh, uh, seizing land from private landowners in this country to authorizing abortions on military bases just because you can as president, 
Uh, some of the other things that I'm sure Rob Whitman talked about uh, that the executive branch can do without oversight. I mean, these things are horrendous for our people and for the future of our country. And we need to have a House of Representatives stand in the gap. They can, uh, they can hold oversight hearings. They can refuse to fund things like, you know, thousands of new IRS agents. Uh, they can take positions to make it very clear what the difference is between conservatives uh, and progressives. And that is very, very important. So it's, it's, Virginia has a chance to really make a difference in this area, uh, not only with the people like Rob Whitman, but the other candidates in Virginia who are running for the House, uh, like uh, Yesley Vega, who are going to stand for the values that we at the Family Foundation share. And I, I, I just can't overestimate for you the importance of supporting efforts like what Victoria and the Family Foundation Action Team are doing. We've got to get people to identify those in, the, in Virginia who share our values and then make sure they know how important it is to go and vote. And that can only be done, frankly, if we have people like the folks on this call uh, who are willing to invest in their efforts. So, I so regret that I can't see you all face to face tonight. Many of us together have served in the trenches in the past. We know how important elections are. And I would just plead with you uh, to make an extra effort this year to help Victoria and the team she's put together uh, work to make sure that all Virginians who share our values know how important it is to vote, uh, to do these door to door efforts, to make these phone calls, to train people on election integrity techniques and get them involved. And the people on this call, you really are the shoulders on which freedom is, is being held in the balance. If you take your time and your resources and invest in this, I really do believe God will come alongside and say, I'm gonna support the, the team at the Family Foundation who's standing for righteousness in this battle. So thank you for the opportunity for chat, for, for, for me to be able to chat with you. And perhaps sometimes between now and election day, uh, we can get together in person or perhaps after election day, we can get together and celebrate how Virginia came once again to the rescue of our great country. Becky, thank you so much. And, and look, before we let you go, you talked about the danger that we are facing. Right now, there's an epidemic of crime across the nation. We see our border being flooded uh, with illegal immigrants in, in, in untold numbers. We've never seen anything like this before. And of course, inflation is raging. I just left the supermarket, my wife and I, this afternoon, and we couldn't believe what we paid for the small amount of groceries that we walked away with. These elections coming up, can they impact these issues? Absolutely, absolutely. You know, one of the challenges that we have is that there is no one in Washington with the power not only to stand up and say no, but to actually stop these things. And controlling the House of Representatives will allow us to not fund bad policies. We can say no with the pocketbook and to actually have oversight hearings that will bring to the attention of all of the American people some of these travesties. And if we don't have the presidency and we don't control the Senate, which we may if people in other states get busy on this, then the only leverage that we will have is the House of Representatives and it will be essential to elect strong, committed conservatives. Thank you, Becky. It's, it's a clarion call. And I it know is. that everybody on this call is hearing it. And, uh, and I trust everybody will do whatever is needed to, in order to make sure that we don't get more of what we've gotten for the last two years. So, so thank you for your leadership, Becky. And you've been, you've been doing this for a, a, a long time. And we really owe you a debt of thanks for your service to this country. God bless you. Well, thank you very much. And God bless everyone, all the people on this call have been standing in the gap and you know we hate to call on it you folks again but we must we need you and um i think we're on the lord's side in this battle 
In fact, you almost preached a sermon because I have a sermon <laughs> called Answer the Call. And you just said it, answer the call. <laughs> so you gave the call, we're going to answer. Uh, well, folks, we now come to the, to the leader of, of this great organization, an organization that I have been in one way or another connected to now for a quarter of a century. Um, I served as chaplain at one point and, uh, and been in various volunteer capacities um, try to help everywhere I've seen the Family Foundation moving because I know that they move with excellence, they move with quality, they move with diligence, with perseverance, that you can count on them, just like today. We didn't cancel the event, we just had to shift it a little bit, but we're still doing it. That's the kind of leadership that Victoria has provided for a long time here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And I really believe this, when the history of the Commonwealth of Virginia is written by those who will reflect back on these days. One of the people that they're going to talk about is gonna be Victoria Cobb and the fact that she was on the front lines of every major issue that affected the Commonwealth of Virginia. So ladies and gentlemen, the leader of the Family Foundation and, uh, and, the, and Family Action, Victoria Cobb. Well, thank you, Bishop Jackson, and what a privilege to be with everyone tonight. I hate the fact that we're doing this virtually and you all, I can, I will take the blame. You know, you make a lot of calls on whether in events over, gosh, I guess it's been 22 years at the Family Foundation and some of them are right, some of them are wrong, we'll see. Um, but there are some severe storms still predicted. And so we did what we did and such is the way that it goes. But um, it is just still an honor to be with everyone tonight. Our hope is maybe we can still find a way to gather at some point. Um, our hope had been with this to be able to at least introduce folks um, to Yes Lee because we know that people haven't yet necessarily met her, especially folks that are outside of the seventh. Um, she unfortunately had to pivot. She was actually flying in from out of state and had to pivot her flight. And so unfortunately she has um, taken a moment to, to basically redirect and is now stuck on a plane. Um, but um, that's not to say we won't have an opportunity um, to get to be with her. And I do wanna, just take this moment to thank our sponsors um, because we have some just really fantastic sponsors um, at the at the platinum level. John and Margaret Whitlock, who um, you know, when the history gets written, it'll be about John <laughs> Whitlock and the backbone of the organization. Um, but also just um, so many others at the silver level: Andy Bond and Senator Amanda Chase and Delegate John McGuire for State Senate, um, Kevin Hankins, Tom and Claudia Phillips. Mike and Elizabeth Smith and Scott and Cynthia Staler. So um, Catherine's putting up the list for you. And then there's a whole host of people beyond that. So I don't want this to, even though maybe we're not all having that moment where we wish we could see each other and our sponsors could stand up. I still feel like they're the backbone that put this event together. Because again, our goal is that this um, is to raise money for the Family Foundation Action. And so um, I want to share with you tonight just a few words about the national picture. I think uh, folks are aware of just what's going on at the national level and Congressman Whitman and, and uh, our dear friend Becky Norton Dunlop just really did a great job mentioning some of these items. Um, but when you think about um, just, I just, I mean, the IRS agents is, a, is, a, is one of those examples where you think, wow. Um, government is just getting bigger and bigger, and it's being weaponized by the left to come after those of us that are standing for values and those of us that are that are hard at work and everyday Americans. Um, and it's not that there's not a place for taxes and there's not a place for making sure that stuff is right. But I think we all know um, what we're seeing is just an out of hand government. Um, and there's other things. Um, if you're not following, there has been a, a bill on marriage equality. At the federal level, and you know, I when I first heard about it, uh, folks said there has to be a mistake because it actually doesn't even simply say that marriage between two people of the same sex will be considered valid at the federal level. Um, it actually allows marriage if a state were to enact polygamous relationships and say that's a legitimate marriage. Our federal government would then say it's a go. We're gonna we're gonna give that. Um, respect and authority and the weight of marriage. And uh, people thought that was a mistake. And I had to tell them, no, 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 we saw that here in Virginia. That's how they tried to do it in Virginia with a, uh, we have, if you remember um, in Virginia, we amended our constitution to have a traditional marriage definition. 
and folks want to repeal and replace. And the replacement did basically the same thing. So they're now trying it at the federal level. We also know at the federal level, we have things like the Equality Act. Um, that was what we've seen at the state level with the Virginia Equality Act. And that is this idea that we're going to not only um, allow same-sex marriage and all those kinds of things, but we're going to actually tell even faith institutions that you can't hire and fire according to the tenets of your faith. If you believe in traditional marriage, good for you, but you can't actually um, stand behind your beliefs. So we've had these kind of bills going through our Congress and, and working their way over to our Senate. And this is the dilemma that we find ourselves in with just an out of control federal branch right now. And as Virginians, we know we've been in that position before at the state level. We had two years where we had top to bottom liberalism from the governor down to the House of Delegates. And we saw what happens when you have top to bottom liberals. You have, um, in our case, we got the Equality Act. We had all our pro-life laws repealed. We had um, even casinos and marijuana legalized. So we saw exactly what happens when you have left leaning government and leaning is a gentle word for what was really the case um left left running in the left direction as far hard and fast as you can is really what we had um and we know at the federal level right now there's a real effort to do everything they can to work to put in place the parameters that were in place under the road decision we've worked 50 years to stand up for the unborn we finally see this unbelievable supreme court decision in the dobbs case that simply says we're going to return this to the states, allow the states to protect life in the way that they see fit. They basically said, yeah, the states can have an interest in human life, and that's for them to determine. But what we're seeing, and Becky alluded to this, we're seeing that they want to do everything possible at the federal level to basically authorize abortion. And that includes considering having abortion on federal land. Where do we have federal lands? Let's have abortion centers there. Can you even imagine if our, you know, our VA institutions, for example, all of a sudden started also offering abortion. Now we have things like the Hyde Amendment. We've said, we're not gonna put tax dollars to abortion, but they are doing everything they can to work around that. And there's a lot of ways to do that. And so when you think about what's at stake, we've seen what's at stake at the state level. We've seen how scary that can be. And that is kind of where we're at, at the federal level, is we're in this moment where we have an opportunity to, and I, when it was at the state level, what I used to say to people is, we need to have a backstop to the crazy. Something has to stop the crazy ideas. There has to be a veto pen, there has to be something, there has to be one chamber that says, no, your craziest left-wing idea is not gonna stand, it's not gonna become law. And when we saw all of this at the state level, people counted out Virginia. They said, it's, it, it can't happen. We're not gonna win another statewide election. And they were fair to make that assessment. They were within reasonable rights to say, yeah, the, the, if you look at the numbers, you look at the history, there's some hard things and it might be hard to recapture Virginia. And so there was a lot of doubters. And honestly, I'm not an unrealistic optimist. I, I look at reality and I know it's, a, it's, it's tough treading in Virginia for conservative issues. But we at the Family Foundation said, we have to double down. We have to do everything we humanly possibly could to get back at least some crazy backstop, something that would stop the, the left-wing ideas that were just ramming through our General Assembly. And so we simply said, we're gonna go after the governor's race. With our TFF action, we're gonna do everything we can and try to recapture the governor's mansion for a conservative. And we committed to where that would overlap with a strategy overlap with the House, we'd work on those house races as well. And I will tell you, um, Congressman Whitman referenced it earlier, this team put together an unbelievable volunteer base and funding base that supported the door knocking. So in that year of the governor's race, that team knocked 133,000 doors. And more than that, they made about another 200,000 contacts with voters through text and calls. An absolutely unbelievable number of people were reached with the message that they could make a difference in the election. And the coolest part is when you get to be done with the election, not only did you get to see that we won, 
And not only did we win the governor's mansion, but we won lieutenant governor, the attorney general, the House of Delegates, every decision Virginia got to make, we made correctly. And that was a pretty unbelievable thing. But not only did we get to see that on the, the large scale, but we actually get to go back and look at the data. We get to say, well, how about the ones we knocked? How about where we actually pressed in? And do you know out of that 133,000 doors that were knocked by some volunteer connected to the Family Foundation or our team itself, out of that group of people, 22,000 people voted in that governor race that did not vote for the governor race four years ago, didn't bother to come out four years ago, didn't think it was important. But this time we had somebody at their door and we said, your vote matters. And we know you care about conservative issues. And they came out and voted. When you think about Governor Yunkin's margin, that's about a third of the margin it took to win. That's, that is a significant achievement. And I tell you that because I want you to see that for the hope that it is for this year. Um, I get to go tell this story about Virginia all around the country. It's been such a fun thing that other states that are blue look at us and they go, what happened in Virginia and how do we do that here? Even, even smaller areas. Um, in fact, in the last two days, I've been in Savannah, Georgia, and I was in North Carolina um, in the Raleigh-Durham area. And with both of those groups, I got to share the story of how Virginia went from this, I mean, bastion of liberalism from top to bottom to completely reversing that. And I'll tell you, even though we look at it and we go, oh, North Carolina, a lot of that seems more conservative. And Georgia, you know, they have, you know, they at least had, a, you know, a conservative governor and, and those kind of things. There are lots of areas that are very blue. In these cities, they have school boards they want to take back. They have, they have children they wanna protect and they have to do that through local elections. And they, they take hope, even in conservative states, there are liberal areas that are looking at our story and looking at what we were able to do and finding that, wow, if it can happen here in Virginia, it can happen anywhere. And I just tell you that because we have a race on our hands this year. We, we absolutely believe that the seventh congressional district, which is where we've decided to spend our energy, is winnable. Um, it started out, if you know anything about political ratings, it started out as what they call a D plus two district, like a Cook rating. You know, it's a little bit Democrat, they'll win by two, two percentage points. It has now been, they call it downgraded, I call it upgraded. It is now a D plus one. We're making a dent and we're not even at Labor Day yet. Already, the Family Foundation Action Team has knocked 43,000 doors in the 7th Congressional District. They have already been hitting the pavement. And I'll just tell you, for those that might not know how all this works, um, we get to partner with some fabulous students. We get to partner with some groups that are in other states. I mean, literally other GOP groups come in from places like Tennessee and they say, we want to make a difference in your state because you have something important going on here. This 7th Congressional race and the 2nd are two of the races that are on national lists as the most important races to win if we're going to send Nancy Pelosi packing. If we wanna take back the Congress, these races are on everyone's list. It's not just because we're Virginians that we care, it's people in all over the country are looking at what are the best races to put your energy and your money and your passion in. And the seventh makes that list because they know it's possible. Um, if you've been following Abigail Spanberger for any amount of time, she has voted wrong on nearly everything. I mean, opposite of pretty much everything you and I believe. And it's really been fun for me because I've been in Spanberger's district. I've always been a seventh congressional district uh, voter. And this year, I, with redistricting, I got to trade her out for Congressman Whitman. So I get to now have a great congressman. But it doesn't mean I'm any less invested in taking out Abigail Spanberger because she's still representing Virginians in a way that doesn't represent our values. And she's still part of the numbers we need to take back the Congress. And so I just share this with you because um, you don't have to live in the seventh to care. You anywhere in the country should be caring about this race. And we're so thrilled that people have cared and have invested in, in this event and trying to pay, uh, fund the work of Family Foundation Action in general. Um, our team, is probably, I would, I would wager against any other entity that this is the best political dollar you can spend. The dollar stretches further than anywhere else um, because we have volunteers and we, we simply put up these students and we fund their hotel and their travel and they hit the doors like I probably couldn't, to be honest. They have energy and enthusiasm and, and just the excitement that comes at the door with a young person is just unbelievable. But that's the kind of um, return for the investment that folks that are 
are helping fund the Family Foundation Action are getting is these kids at the door saying, no, you do care about this economy. You should make a difference and, and vote opposite of how folks have been voting in the seventh in the past. And so um, there's also a really fun thing that's probably gonna happen this election. Um, our Family Foundation Action Team only began knocking doors and doing the direct voter contact that we do now, um, really in the 2019 House races at the tail end. So after Labor Day in 2019 is when we started. And do you know that it is likely that by the time we get to November of this year, we will have hit one million voter contacts in just what three basically three to four years um imagine feeling like this army is ready and poised to get us to to touching a million virginians for the conservative message to vote according to their values um so i just am excited to be a part of this i get to be a little teeny part because it's really the folks that are actually every day out on the pavement which is not usually where i am um but it's it's an amazing thing if you ever see them they knock in rain they knock in it's it's pretty it's pretty phenomenal the dedication that these guys have um but i will tell you i believe it is going to make all the difference in the world yes candidates knock their own doors but i will tell you um there have been, and I won't say which elections, there are have been elections where we have literally had a team that has knocked more doors than the candidates team. That tells you how hard this team is working. And so um, we're thrilled that everybody could at least join us tonight on Zoom, disappointed that we couldn't be together. We are going to figure out how we can introduce you to this amazing candidate that we have in the seven. Um, but I guess with that, I'll just say, we're so grateful that you joined us even though um, not the ideal venue. Thanks, EW, for, uh, for hosting us. You are more than welcome, Victoria. And let me just say, my organization supports what you're doing in the seventh. I live in the second. It doesn't matter a bit because every one of these races is important. And so people shouldn't withhold resources because they think, well, I don't really live there. We've got to win every single one of these. So you're absolutely right. And by the way, let me say, I've had the privilege of speaking to these young people and spending time with them. You, you bring together a phenomenal group of young people, Victoria, who are dedicated to the cause. I mean, they're not in this for money. They're in this because they really believe as we do. They love this country. They want to do something to stop abortion, to stop the, the as you, I, I like the phrase, by the way, they want to do something to veto the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and so you are, you are really getting it done. And, and we, we commend you for it and thank you for it. Folks, uh, this year alone in the 7th District, they've, they've made 150,147 calls, 120,839 texts. And as Victoria said, 43,191 doors have been knocked. And they've shifted. The, the, the political landscape in this district already. And we just have to help make sure that they can continue the work that they're doing so that we get Yesley across the finish line because it's gonna be important not only for the Commonwealth of Virginia, but for the entire country to have her representing the seventh district in Congress. So let me just say this. Uh, and, and by the way, we, we also support some of these interns that, that you've got to pay for a hotel and you've got to pay for food and you've got to take care of these people. So we've also supported that to try to, to help the Family Foundation do this very, very costly, but very important work. And by the way, work that is more cost effective than almost anything I can think of. Because as you said, Victoria, you're doing things that sometimes candidates can't do. They simply don't have the bandwidth to do it. So, so it, it is very, very important work. Folks, my wife and I this past week, in fact, just yesterday, were back from a week-long trip to visit our granddaughter. And when I look at that little baby, she's only five months old right now, but I look at that little baby and I think to myself, I don't want somebody ordering me that you can't or her parents you can't put her gender on the birth certificate because somehow that would be discrimination or that would be bigotry. Yeah, that, we got to veto that kind of crazy. Or to say to her, you, you, can't, you can't wear a cross to school or to a public event, or you can't talk about Jesus, or you can't pray because uh, that, that's offensive to people. And, and uh, you, your First Amendment rights 
don't include that. We got to veto that kind of crazy. And I certainly don't want her having to deal with the kind of crime that we've been witnessing that is just absolutely horrendous. My wife and I were talking about it. You now look at areas, you think, oh, wow, that's a, such a beautiful area. I'd love to visit that. There's no place in America now that is not subject to this crime wave where people can feel perfectly comfortable wandering around the streets, just enjoying themselves because it's reaching into every area of the Commonwealth. I don't want my granddaughter to have to deal with that. And I know you all don't want to deal with it. You don't want your children and your grandchildren to have to deal with it. But this is where the battle is right now. This is what we can do. We can't wave a magic wand and save the country, although I would differ a little bit with Charles Stanley. I really believe that the prayers of the saints have been heard by God and God's going to give us an awakening. And I think what happened in Virginia was part of that awakening, by the way, <laughs> with your help, Victoria. So now I'm a little bit more positive about an awakening, but faith without works is dead. So folks, the question comes down to how can you help? What can you do? Uh, we've got to raise some money to do this. It's cost effective, but we've got to raise some money. Um, there is a goal. I don't see it in front of me. Uh, let me see if I, I can put my hands on those notes. But I know we've got a goal. And uh, as, as a friend of mine often says, you know, the bad news is we don't have everything we need right now. The good news is it's in your pocket. It's in your wallet. It's in your bank account. So, so folks, uh, Victoria, how do people give? If they want to give right now, do they go to the Family Foundation website? What's, what's the best thing they can do? And what's the, what's the goal we're, we're, we're seeking right now? I don't want to misstate it. Yep. So um, we were aiming to raise $25,000 with this event. We've raised 20. So we're still looking wow. to at least hit our goal for this event. Um, in your chat box, there has been put a link. So you guys should be able to see that. If you just look at your, look at the chat side, you'll be able to see a link, but basically, you know, you can always go to our, our website. That's always the easiest, but there is a direct link to family foundation action where you can donate. And I'll just share with folks. Um, it's, amazing to me how much we accomplish with so little and so we this this goal gets us to the next thing and then we're even right now planning a deployment and i will tell you when you get to these geo tv deployments at the end where you just need so many students hitting the doors for a full week and we're putting them up you know housing them up in prince william um we've just looked at that and that's going to be a twenty five thousand dollar effort but we have the people so all we need is the funds to put them up and feed them uh, we have the manpower to make it happen and so anyway whatever we can raise is the most important thing because we want to accomplish this goal tonight and then we want to accomplish eventually getting that next deployment funded so um you know it's just well, it's just um you know one one dollar at a time and we just put it to work immediately well victoria you now have twenty one thousand. i'm going to pledge a thousand dollars to the oh. effort right now and I know some people can do more than that quite easily. Some can't do that, but everybody can do something, right? Everybody can do something. So folks, I would just encourage you because we do this because we love our country and we love the Commonwealth of Virginia and we really want the very best for all of our citizens. We're not doing this out of selfishness. Believe me, Victoria is a very bright woman. If she were interested in building a financial empire for herself, there's something else she could have done. But what she's interested in doing is serving the people of the Commonwealth of Virginia, and, and she's doing it exceedingly well with integrity. So I just encourage you to go to the website. Um, you can put a check in the mail for some people who don't want to do that. Yep. Uh, that's very, I'm sure the website's got the address on it, right? Yeah. You can send a check. Uh, whatever you do, folks, and, and those of you who really can do more, I encourage you. We got $4,000 short of that $25,000 goal now. Add that four in, and then whatever else comes in is gravy, because believe me, <laughs> there's going to be plenty to do with it, that's for sure. Uh, so, Victoria, I, I trust that we will hit the goal today and, uh, and exceed it, and we'll be praying for that, but more importantly, praying for your continued success at trying to help bring our country and our commonwealth back to the values, as you mentioned early, uh, that made this nation great and made this commonwealth a leader for the nation. So God bless you. Keep up the good work.